Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul J. in Baltimore. Hugo Chavez, president of Venezuela, has been back in his country just over a week after weeks and weeks in Cuba for his cancer treatment. He remains secluded, apparently meeting only immediate family and senior members of the Venezuelan government. And in other Venezuelan news, there's been a devaluation of the Venezuelan currency, the Bolivar. Now joining us to talk about all of this is Greg Wilpert. Greg's a sociologist who lived in Venezuela between 2000 and 2008, where he also founded Venezuela Analysis. He also taught at the Central University of Venezuela. 2007, he published the book, Changing Venezuela by Taking Power, the History and Policies of the Chavez Government. He's now back in the U.S., where his wife is the Council General for Venezuela. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me again, Paul. So let, let's start with what we know of what's happening with President Chavez and, and, and what, what has his return meant in terms of public opinion and the politics and waiting. Is there going to be a swearing in? Is there going to be another election? Well, those are a, a number of questions that are a bit difficult to answer because we still don't know the definite answer to any of them. Uh, the significance, though, I think, uh, of Chavez's return is basically to show that there's still a possibility that he will return to office. Uh, they are basically, that is Chavez and his uh, closest advisors are basically still keeping the hope alive that Chavez might uh, retake the presidency and that there would be no uh, elections, that in other words, he would be cured uh, from his cancer. Uh, there is no definitive prognosis yet as to whether that will happen or not. Uh, it seems like, based on the medical reports, the official medical reports that we've received, which are very vague, it seems that um, it still could go either way. Uh, recently, uh, the government announced that Chavez was still suffering from what they call a respiratory insufficiency, and <clears throat> this, um, and that uh, the treatment for that was uh, not making much progress. So that did not sound too good, but they did say that he was responding uh, positively to the uh, cancer treatment. Um, so, so it's a mixed report. Uh, so, and uh, it's clear that he currently also has uh, a tracheotomy, which means he cannot speak. And in his meetings with uh, high-level officials uh, of his government, he has basically been communicating by writing notes to them. So, <clears throat> but they say that he's in good spirits and that he's still fighting the disease, and are basically, like I said. Uh, holding out the hope that he could still uh, return to office. Now, Pre uh, President, Mor President Morales of uh, Bolivia went there just recently to visit him, but wasn't able to. But they, uh, so I guess his, his situation is still pretty serious. Uh, I mean, I, we know it's very serious, but the fact that he couldn't meet uh, Morales. Yes, uh, which seems a little bit uh, surprising because it seemed like Morales came extra to see Chavez and that he couldn't see him seems a little bit strange, I guess. <laughs> On the other hand, he hasn't received any officials other than his uh, closest uh, advisors, that is really <clears throat> uh, Nicolas Maduro, the vice president and the president of the National Assembly, Diosdado Cabello, and then his uh, closest family members. Those are the only ones, according to most reports, that have see actually seen him. Uh, and then, of course, we saw the pictures uh, about two weeks ago of Chavez uh, in bed in Cuba. So. <clears throat> Uh, it, that, it seems like the, the, those are the only uh, points we have to see you know, what the possibility would be for the near future. Uh, is there the, any time frame on this, this issue of, of him being sworn in? Is there, is there a time frame that he, now that he's in the country, in theory, he could be sworn in? Yes, there's uh, talk about that every once in a while uh, and uh, rumors swirling around. Uh, he could be sworn in. And that's really the perhaps one of the main reasons why he returned to Cuba was precisely to be sworn in. But there is no time frame. Uh, the Supreme Court basically said that uh, since uh, Chavez was president before, and that uh, essentially the swearing in is a mere formality. Uh, it should happen, they said, but uh, it does not affect the continuity of government. And uh, therefore, there is no real time frame. The Constitution does set a time frame for certain circumstances, uh, but uh, those haven't been invoked. That is, uh, the circumstance being a, um, a, an officially declared temporary absence or an officially declared absolute absence of the president that is declared by the uh, National Assembly. But neither of those uh, declarations have been made, and therefore, there's no time frame. Okay, now, Vice President Maduro uh, 
at least under his authority, I guess, although they're saying President Chavez is still making big decisions. But the Bolivar, the Venezuelan currency, was devalued. So how much and why? Well, it was devalued by about 34 uh, percent. And uh, the reason is very simple and straightforward economics. It was really necessary, I would say. And this, of course, uh, for uh, many leftists always sounds a bit like a betrayal or something. But the fact is the Venezuelan currency is constantly devaluing by virtue of its inflation. It has a uh, 20 to 25 percent inflation per year. And so that means effectively within the country it's devaluing cons constantly. Uh, what hasn't been devaluing or hasn't been adjusted is uh, the relationship or the value of the currency with respect to other currencies around the world. And so this creates a tremendous imbalance, making uh, Venezuelan products artificially expensive because uh, you end up paying a lot more um, bolivares uh, for uh, anything that is produced in Venezuela because of the currency, but you're still exchanging it at the same exchange rate as a couple years ago. And, um, and so it, everything within Venezuela keeps getting more and more expensive, especially if you're using the official exchange rate uh, and buying things, let's say, with, at the official exchange rate, uh, uh, let's say, in dollars in Venezuela. So the adjustment was absolutely necessary in order to adjust or uh, match the actual value of the currency with the rest of the world. So the, so the Venezuelan produced products become more inexpensive but foreign products become more expensive. So what does that do to the overall inflation rate? Well, yes, a lot of people, especially the opposition, say that that will just increase inflation again. But that's not quite true. That assumes that everything that Venezuela is importing is being imported at the official exchange rate. But that's not what's been happening. That is only very uh, limited goods are uh, imported at the official exchange rate. Uh, a lot more, the, I think the vast majority of products are actually being imported at the black market exchange rate. And uh, so that means uh, every time the, uh, the currency uh, loses value within the country, it also loses value on the black market. And therefore, there's a constant adjustment already happening. Uh, and therefore, adjusting the official exchange rate won't make much of a difference. Uh, what it will make a difference for, it, though, is uh, it will increase the government's resources because now when it brings, for every dollar that it brings into the country, instead of uh, exchanging it to four bolivares, it can exchange it into six bolivares. Uh, so in other words, it can increase almost by 50 percent the amount of uh, currency that is in circulation. Now that, of course, could increase inflation, uh, but it basically makes the government that much richer and makes the Venezuelan debt also much cheaper. So that's also another advantage. And what, what, so is it, what does it do to an ordinary worker's wages? Well, if they were buying things uh, directly abroad, then of course it would uh, lower at the official exchange rate, then it would of course lower their ability, their purchasing power abroad. But like I said, almost nobody does that. Very few people do actually uh, use the uh, official exchange rate to buy things in other countries. So within the country though, like I said, I don't think the impact will be very big as a matter of fact, in previous devaluations, uh, inflation did not increase uh, much, uh, maybe just a slight blip, uh, but uh, not by the amount that the currency was devalued. And why, why is there such high inflation in Venezuela? Some of the other countries that have you know, oil economies too, I guess you could say Ecuador, inflation is not as, as, as rampant. Well, the difference, you have to look at each country in comparison. I mean, the difference with Ecuador is that its oil production is a, a fraction of what Venezuela's is. Uh, I don't know exactly what the percentages uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, foreign revenue that uh, the Ecuadorian economy has from its oil exports, but in Venezuela, 90% of its uh, export revenues come from oil uh, production. And so that, uh, of course, uh, means that practically all of its uh, foreign revenues come from oil. And so when, uh, when it sells oil abroad, uh, it brings that uh, those dollars into the country and brings more more currency in circulation, which uh, chasing after the same amount of goods, and so that of course increases inflation in Venezuela, and that's a chronic problem for Venezuela. It has been basically ever since uh, the oil boom years of the early 1970s. Uh, as a matter of fact, in previous presidencies, inflation averaged um, up to around 50% per year. So uh, historically speaking, the Chavez government's inflation rate is almost half of what it was uh, in the pre-Chavez uh, pre president's uh, inflation rates. And to what extent is Maduro establishing himself as the, 
next leader in terms of public opinion? Well, that's one of the reasons uh, it seems that uh, there might be elections coming up because Maduro seems to be almost campaigning. I mean, he's uh, on television all the time. He's basically keeping up a public appearance schedule uh, that is on a par with Chavez's public appearances with uh, inaugurations and events and activities and speeches almost every day or every other day. So it, uh, he's constantly in the public eye, and uh, he has certainly benefited from that. According to uh, recent polls, uh, he would, you know, if there were, if an election were called this week, uh, then uh, Maduro would probably uh, win with 50% of the vote, and the, probably the most popular opposition candidate, which is the ex-opposition presidential candidate uh, Enrique Capriles Radonsky, would get only about 34% of the vote. So. It seems that Maduro has a, a significant uh, lead over uh, Kapiriles Raronsky, and uh, I think that's because he seems to be uh, campaigning, but also because people are giving him credit uh, for um, the relatively smooth continuity and functioning of, of the government. All right, thanks for joining us, Greg. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.